breakneck speeds and well, dangerous airtime. Certainly a change of pace from the courses we've seen recently. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. And Races and Fun has brought quite a fun course for us today. Eight teams will participate in this tournament, of course going head to head each time as we narrow it down. And uh, the two going up today will guinea pig this new uh, course focused on speed, high cliffs, and uh, a big jump right at the end. Take a look at all the teams that will eventually compete on this course. And if you're not going first, the good time to watch and get a sense of what you'll be going up against later on. All-American will be team one today. And... They'll face off against the Mercedes team, both from Hot Wheels, and we'll kick it off. 16 Mercedes and the Corvette. Mercedes on the near side, Corvette on the far, as they chance the course for the first time, and it's looking pretty good for the Corvette. And here comes the jump, and it was clean for the Corvette. And that's going to be a good benchmark for hopefully what's to come. Corvette loses a little control at the end, but was able to hold the lead through. Beautiful jumps for both vehicles. Ooh, but the uh, Mercedes almost fell a little short right there. And if you miss the jump, well, there's a crocodile waiting below and probably a lost race. Mustang and Mercedes. Mercedes is bouncing down the hill on the far side there, behind a little bit on the outside line. Here comes the Mustang into the jump, and it looks clean. Mercedes follows suit, but again falling behind, and uh, All-American will pick up now two winners so far into today's tournament. Quite the hill at the beginning as well. Certainly picks up a lot of speed down the hill. Mercedes here on the near side. This time in gray. Slow again out of the gate. And oh, Mercedes team might fall short once again. Here comes the jump and it's clean for the All-American but he does switch around. And now he's going backwards. He'll finish way in front. But in the wrong direction. Mercedes, well, that's three times that they'll fall short. They need that high hill for a reason. To get enough speed to push over that jump. But even the slower vehicles have been uh, handling it just fine today. Ford GT and the Mercedes-Benz. Can Mercedes pick up at least one win here? So far, not so good. Here comes Mercedes-Benz with a lead here through the first sector. Now to the jump, and Mercedes starts to get length on the 4 GT. Here comes the hairpin, it looks pretty good. And he will straighten out to a win. 4 GT actually started in the lead, but uh, had trouble climbing that hill. Maybe things went wrong in the uh, engine. Did not have the power. Mercedes-Benz 500 in the Chevrolet Impala. Impala, ooh, fast out of the gate. Already a length ahead. Here comes the Benz, though. Trying to push it back, and they're about even. Impala, it's going to be tough on the jump. Maybe a collision? Yes! The Benz goes towards the right side, but now the Impala's backwards. He's slower, but I think he'll win here by a hood length. They do stop the camera very conveniently right as they cross the line, and I think you see the Impala take it by just a tiny bit. Very close, but the Mercedes-Benz only hangs on to one for their team. Dodge Charger and the Benz 500. Here comes the Charger, fast out of the gate. Ooh, by half a length he holds the lead. Ooh, looks bad for the Benz for the outside line. It starts to slow down quite a bit, and it's a good jump for both vehicles, but the, the Benz is going to fall just short. Didn't have time to catch up. And he's going to Leave all that out on the track. The Benz 8 class and a Pontiac. And Pontiac for All-American. Trying to uh, quench the Benzes once again. Not looking good though for the Pontiac. Who's slow into the jump. Ooh, bounces on the back wheels right there. Oh, the Benz slows down. He's T-boned but pushed across. That was a stroke of luck right there for the Benz. Look at him around the hairpin. He starts to lose control and goes sideways, but the Pontiac could not seem to shove by. He just nudges him forward. Ford Mustang, Mercedes AMG. 
I'm not sure if it would have been better for the Pontiac to slow down a little and maybe give time for the Mercedes-Benz to continue to spin out. Here comes the Mustang. And it looks like he's going to have it, even though he's backwards. And a good finish there. And it's really beautiful to see the cars make that jump as well. No matter who wins the airtime is nice to see. All-American with six Mercedes only holding on to two vehicles. One of them was pushed across, again, by a large amount of luck. Corvette, Mercedes-Benz rolling down. Two Benzes left on the team right now. And one of them might be cut off here. He's ahead by a few lengths, but he's on the side of the course. Grind to the outside. Wheels hang over for a second. And now he's behind. And there's no way he's going to finish first now. It just went pear-shaped for him after the jump. And he spun right there as the All-American comes by. And now we have the Charger in the Benz. The last Benz. Can he move on? Slow out of the gate, but fast up to the turn. No, but he glitches on the side. I think the wheels hit the embankment. And I think the Ford, if he's able to just hold a win here. Oh, he goes sideways. Backwards, though. He regains speed. And he will take the win, but mm, it was a little closer than he would have liked. Only because the Benz tried a little bit too hard on the uphill climb and lost control, headed over that barrier. And well, that's going to be... It's going to be a failure. Mustang in the 4 GT. And now we're just cutting down on all Americans right here. And the GT here on the far side, on the near side now. And actually, good jump for both cars. GT goes sideways and backwards. Mustang also spins around. And the GT... He will get it. Mustang should have held control out of that hairpin. He was straight otherwise. What about the Mustang and the Impala? Saw this purple Mustang actually have quite the race last time. And a pretty fast car. And, but the Impala's holding his own quite well, actually taking the lead here by a few lengths. Here comes the Mustang in the hairpin though, looking fast but loses control. And the Impala will hold through on that. And he will head to the semifinals as well. Now we'll leave four cars, all of them all American. Yeah, but they'll still fight it out to the end. Semifinals. Ford GT and the Dodge Charger. Ford GT. Looks good in this last race. Same with the Charger, about neck and neck as they climb up the hill. Charger now falling behind by a couple of lengths. Here comes the GT over the jump, and it looks good. And the same as the Charger. And the GT is able to hold his own through the end. There won't be any contest towards the back sector. You can name the sectors pretty easily. Once we hit that jump, I think it turns to Sector 2. A little bit shorter of a sector, but open lane. Corvette and the Chevrolet Impala. Impala, Corvette, Impala, by a length out of the gate, but as they climb the hill, Corvette starts to climb back into the race. Here comes three lengths between them, Impala, a nice jump for both of them. Corvette spins for a second, gains back some speed, but the Impala finally starts to break away here in the last few lengths. And there was no uh, mistakes to capitalize on there for the Corvette. And the finals. First to win two races. A shame that we don't see any of the uh, Mercedes team in here. Actually, all of them were dropped out a couple rounds ago. But uh, we'll at least get some good racing here. These cars have both been competitive today. And now it's neck and neck for both of them. The Impala knocks into the 4 GT over the jump and that actually helps him out a little bit. He regains control. And you can see the collision right there. That helped the 4 GT quite a bit. And... Well, he took that to advantage, and backwards rolls across the finish line. We change lanes. 4 GT just needs one more to sweep the finals. Impala, oh, looking pretty badly actually over the jump. Starts to catch up though, 4 GT losing control. Here comes the Impala, knocks him forward and across. And that's the second time today that we've seen something of the sort. Car behind, well, not able to handle a blocking car.
will continue here in round two. Remember round one, American beat Mercedes. And now round two, we have the Japanese sports cars. And they'll be facing off against the fantasy cars. Fantasy team really gets around. Grand Cross and the Kia Stinger will kick things off. As I said, the fantasy really gets around. We see him in many tournaments on races and fun. And this one is a no exception. Grand Cross falling behind here into the jump. Almost goes nosedive into the pavement. But he ends up backwards, but a little bit slow coming out of the hairpin. And he won't get across. Well, maybe not at all. Camera pans down the track, and well, we'll find the Grand Cross stopped a few lengths short. Things really went south after that jump. You can see how it was almost 90 degrees as he uh, hit ground right there. And, well, all the momentum was lost. Nissan Leaf and the eruption. An eruption there on the far side, Nissan Leaf on the near side, and falling a length behind through the first straight. And now it all went slow for him on that first hairpin, but the eruption turns around, and he's all over the place, diving down the line here on the near side. And he's able to straighten out and stay fast. And we might have another car not finishing. Looks like the Nissan's going to come within a few car lengths of the finish line and give up. Yeah, eruption. A really good job managing control after things got out of hand there for a moment. And just focused on getting across the line. Electro Silhouette and the Mazda. Silhouette, Mazda. Silhouette starts a little behind now, grabs back the lead through the hairpin pretty fast. Mazda still got a chance though. Looking good down the hill and smooth out of the jump. It starts to spin around. And the Silhouette's gonna distance himself from the Mazda pretty easily. Again, another car not finishing. Mazda, I thought, had the speed for it, but well, that's three times in a row that a car is going to come up just short of the line. And that's not looking good for the Japanese sports. Nissan and Moto Wing. Japanese sports have been struggling. So far today, fantasy cars have been pretty dominant. Moto Wing falling behind. Here comes oh, for the jump. He does get over, but he goes sideways for a second. He's backwards now, but he has speed. He's going to ram on the right side. No, he hits off a piece of the track. And he's going to slow down right before. Well, he looked like he had the speed to pass. And he had the time to do it. You see him catching up there, but well, he nudged into something there on the side. Looks like the wheel kind of came off the car. I think that was the end of it. Vulture and the Nissan. Nissan coming out length ahead, already out of the gate, looking good through the start. Vulture trying to catch up. Eh, actually, not too far behind. Here comes the jump, and the Nissan is out of control in the jump. He's already backwards. Comes the Vulture on the far side, and he's going to catch up, and he's going to nudge the Nissan across. And it won't be a good finish for the Vulture. One of the worst things you can do out on the track is... Well, help your teammate across the line. Help your uh, enemy across the line, we'll say. Kia Stinger and the Electrack. Kia, Electrack. Ooh, both of them looked wobbly down the start. Losing control of their speed right there. Electrack much smoother through the second jump here. It looks pretty good down the back stretch. And the Kia Stinger, well, kind of skidded there for a moment and well, he won't have a good time finishing. Fantasy cars continue to add to their lead. Exotic and the Kia Sting. Exotic, a beautiful looking car. Very aerodynamic in shape, at least uh, from my view. And, well, it's paying off so far right now. He's up by a lot. Big lead, nudges off the track there and goes sideways and backwards, but manages control. And as he crosses the line, actually, at a 40 degree angle. Kia Stinger also backwards and will get across, but <laughs> not in as much style. Look at this replay, both of them coming in backwards and a little bit of zigzag action there from uh, the Exotic. That's still a win. Kia Stinger and the Bubblematic. Now, I think the Japanese uh, sports 
team is going to be a little bit disappointed if they lose to a car called the Bubble Matic. So this Kia Sting is certainly going to put on the Jets here at the end. Looking pretty good. Bubble Matic goes for a defensive move. Trying to knock the Kia Stinger off his wheels. Well, didn't work. And the well, Japanese team can feel a little bit validated. They at least beat out the Bubble Matic. And they pull even Japanese sport with four fantasy with four. We go to the next round. Tied at four. Kia Stinger Electrak. Saw the Electrak before. And well, the Electrak wasn't on the track very long. One of the faster times we've seen today. And we're doing well against the Kia Stinger here in the second round. Putting distance between them. And well, he had no problems down the back stretch. Not much skidding at all and stayed straight. Well, that's how you want to do it. Keep the chaos at a minimum, especially if you don't have to deal with any cars near you. He's out of the gate like a flash and had the speed to put it away. Nissan R and the Electro Silhouette. Nissan R, well, this has been one of the better performing Japanese sport cars, so certainly eyes on the Nissan R. Here comes the jump, gets ahead by a little bit and straight out of the jump. The Electro Silhouette spins around a couple of times and all the speed is gone. He may not finish the race. And yeah, he'll come uh, up a few lengths short and just kind of die there. Nissan R representing quite well. Look at that jump too. Beautiful. Almost absolutely perfectly parallel with the track on the other side. Certainly form to recognize. Nissan GTR and the Exotic. Nissan, Exotic, neck and neck down here, first straight here, they go up towards the hairpin, Exotic starts to fall behind, but grabs back the lead towards the jump, and they're both moves for the jump, it will be a tough backstretch for both of them, here comes the Exotic down the far side, and the Nissan follows, and can't get any acceleration here at the end. Exotic there, actually, if you saw, went, uh, wheel grinded there on the side of the track there for a moment, it's a wonder he gained control and kept the speed necessary to win the race. He is Stinger in the air eruption. And you saw the air eruption kind of win with ease earlier on. And it looks like that may happen again. Looking very good into the jump. He is Stinger fast into the jump. There's some acceleration right there. But the air eruption just, well, he'll never slow down. You might see him in the finals. And now we've narrowed it to four. One Japanese sports car to three fantasy. The semifinals will pick the best two. And, well, the Japanese sport, they only have one hope. It's the Nissan R going up against the Exotic, who's a tough car to beat, especially down the back stretch of the race. One of the best jumpers we've seen so far in the tournament. And, again, looking good. Does get there for a second. I think the speed is gone, and the Nissan R is going to have the win. A little bit of an upset for sure. And again, the Exotic pulling off to the left side. You saw a couple of his wheels grind there on the side of the track as he uh, jumped through the gap. And I think that did him in. Eruption Electrak. And we'll narrow down the fantasy car options to one. Who will verse the Nissan R? Right now it's looking like the Electrak. Eruption struggling to get out of the jump, but fast, even going backwards. And, but not enough to catch up. And the Electrak. By a little bit. Also finishing backwards. We'll uh, head to the finals. And well, it'll be team versus team here in a best of three. First to win two races. Rules are always the same. Electrak Nissan R390. Both cars, definitely the MVPs for their particular team. And neck and neck through the first straight. That's the closest we've seen as far as first straights go. And still close into the jump. Oh, they start to switch. They switch lanes. And the Nissan R starts to pull away. Electrak had some trouble there coming out of the hairpin. He knocked into something in the ground. And, well, a stroke of bad luck. You saw the nose of his car kind of fall inward. And, well... He's going to have to pick it back up here if he wants to pull even. He does get a good jump out of the hairpin. He's head by a few lengths. Here comes a Nissan R. Almost sideways. Almost went on the rail there for a second. And the same thing happened for the Nissan R this time. It happened for the Electrak last time. 
Falls just behind at the end and had a tough spin out of the hairpin. And this time he fell away. Changing lanes, final time, who will win? Oh, looks slow for both of these cars. Out of the first straight, Electrax starts to pull ahead. Here's the jump, and they turn right, both of them, into each other now. Electrax starts to pull away, and I think that's going to do it. Nissan R may not even finish. A little slow out the end, but looking pretty fine, actually. And, well, a lot of collision out there, especially down the second sector. And, uh, well... That's how a good finals race should be. Electrac will win and take it. If you look at the last couple of races, you'll notice one of the biggest loss of speed comes at the first hairpin. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and I warned cars coming out today to be aware of the approach into the first hairpin. We got the Street Beasts today, and they will be facing the Porsche team. And well, we got two teams that have already moved on to the next round, Porsche and the Tordo Shell, to get things started. And those teams would be American and the Fantasy Cars. Who had quite the valiant performances in uh, their separate heats. Tortoise Shell switch there for a little um, and then straightens out. And the Porsche will come across. Actually, they seem to twist simultaneously after this hairpin. You see in the replay with twist, twist. And then uh, the Porsche just spins out of control. And we go a duck and roll and the Porsche Panamera. And you guys know that uh, the duck and roll is one of my personal favorite vehicles out there on the track. Some incredible comeback finishes from this particular vehicle. As well, it's just a pleasure to watch them race. This particular duck and roll, well, he's almost rolling backwards at this point. And he won't even cross the line. He held it good to the first half, but it struggled over the jump and lost control. Those big back wheels a little bit troublesome for the duck and roll on this particular type of course. Looks like he's sliding on ice there. Porsche 935 and then another turto shell. This one silver in color on the top. Certainly stands out. And takes over the lead to the first sector here. Here comes the jump and the turto shell. Oh, very smooth to the jump. No, but he's backwards. But I think the Porsche didn't make it over. It's the first time we've seen this. The 935... We'll get a look at where he is, maybe? And, yeah, he fell right beneath the track there. And, well, oh, look at him descend. Flip the track up a little bit. Just missed. Uh, it's going to be tough to dig him out of there. Duck and roll on the 944. And I certainly hope that Porsche is okay. Unfortunately, not going to be moving on. But uh, safety is of utmost importance. This duck and roll a little bit better than the previous one. Does spin out there in the turn. Porsche 944 trying to get around. But he's just nudging him across. And they both turn around. And the duck and roll here fares a little bit better. Again, the back wheel's tough on the duck and roll. Look at him skid coming out of the turn. And he's backwards before the hairpin. And that's going to be trouble. For later rounds for sure. And we got our third duck and roll of the day. Porsche taken. And this one oh, looks pretty good through the first turn. Here comes the jump. Can he avoid skidding out like the other counterparts? No, he's backwards for a second there. He does straighten out, but now he's backwards again. And he does manage to beat the Porsche, but only because well, the Porsche got locked up. And then he T-boned the duck and roll. Look at him there, nudging him back into position. Couldn't really get around. Crock Rod and the Porsche Carrera. Rock ride, certainly a car to keep your eyes on. One of the better 
and the faster Street Beast when I expected to have a graceful jump here over the, uh, the jump, and he does. He actually does, almost fell a little short, took a little bit of a nosedive, but uh, kept straight, had no problem uh, keeping his wheels aligned as he headed towards that final hairpin. Velociraptor in the Porsche 911. No Porsche Velociraptor looking about even out of the first hill there. And now the Velociraptor just takes over through the... Ooh, Porsche goes down right there, right under the lip. And that's the second time a Porsche couldn't make the jump. And unfortunately for the Porsche team, well, that's not going to look very good. Especially even if they make it to the next round. How does it look if two of your vehicles can't even get over the jump? It's not a problem that any other team had, even the losing teams in the previous videos. The I believe in the Porsche Safari. Believe Safari. Believe actually stretching out a lead early on here. Safari trying to nudge back into it faster the hairpin. And the jump is not good once again. That's thrice. And the Porsche team is taking a beating out there over the jumps. I don't know what it is. They seem to have the speed. Something about... The uh, movement through the air. I don't know what it is, but nose dives all around. That's three cars for the Porsche that couldn't seem to make it over the jump. Um, there are in separate lanes, so certainly can't blame any other vehicles for that loss of speed. I don't really know what's going wrong. One Porsche hangs on as we head to the next round. Can one Porsche hang on and win it? For the Porsche team, I'm hoping so. This would be certainly an exciting finish. One Porsche can make this uh, comeback here. Panorama. Panamera. And it is the Croc Rod. A tough racer to beat. And here comes the Croc Rod over the jump. A good jump for both cars. Here comes the Panamera at the end. But no, we're not going to be nearly fast enough. And the Porsche team's already out. Into the quarterfinals. And, uh, well, we only have one team to go. Street Beast certainly going to be a... Valiant contender here coming uh, towards the next couple of rounds. Turtle Shell in the I believe. Well, that well, was just practice for them. They can already start to celebrate, but uh, the competition goes on. We have to have a singular winner from each one of these uh, tournaments. And that's just the way it is. I believe trying to nudge by here on the near side, and I think he might. We'll need to see the replay. We got the hairpin. See how the I Believe dodges to the inside. Turtle Shell straightens out on the outside line, and the Believe tries to speed up, and the arrow points to the finish line, and it may be the Believe. Turtle Shell duck and roll. I think the Believe pulled quite the uh, feet right there. Actually, coming from behind. Duck and roll this time against the Turtle Shell, looking a lot faster through the jump, and is able to stay straight with his wheels. Nudges off three different pieces of track. It's like a zigzag out there. But he does best the turtle shell by uh, quite a margin. Yeah, well, it's good to see a duck and roll head on to the semifinals. Let's look at the Velocir Racer on the duck and roll. This one green in color. And well, barely eked out the win last time. Let's see if he can be better this time. Well, against the Velocir Racer, it's going to be quite difficult. This is this is quite the vehicle out there. Look how fast he gets to the end of the line. Deccan Roll had no chance, even from Sector 1. And that will wrap things up for Round 2. Street Beast with 4 left. And yes, the I believe is... Victorious from that previous race. Wow, what a comeback. I believe in duck and roll and these two particular vehicles uh, Bar the paradox are two of the most uh, Impressive racers when it comes to comebacks on the race course this duck and roll having no part of any possibility for that though I'm just gonna stretch out that lead and win by almost the largest margin we've seen today uh, with the exception of the cars who uh, know, Fell short of sector two Lots of racer in the croc rod. Mm, two of the fastest cars out here. This will be a neck and neck heat for sure. Here they go towards the first turn. Who's going to come out with the advantage? It is the Velociraptor. Croc Rod 
Ooh, over the jump, looking smooth. Velociracer can't hold his control. Uh, Crocron trying to push by on the near side. Are you going to push the Velociracer across? Oh my god, he pushed him about five lengths of track. Look at this. Comes around. Velociracer turns, and the rest of that back straight. The Crocrod is just locked into the back wheels of the Velociracer, and things are going to end as such. And the Velociracer will, well, I wouldn't say unfairly, but certainly with lots of fortune, be able to see the deck and roll in the finals. Here they go. Velociracer a little bit faster of a vehicle out of the gate, but it's a... This duck and roll seems to have his wheels well oiled. Things are looking good through the turn, and he's straight too. Here comes the skid, but it's uh, too late for the Lost Racer to make any anything of it. He's also turning backwards there towards the end. Man, things start off well for the duck and roll here in the finals. They change lanes. Who's going to take this race? Will it be a sweep for the duck and roll? And the Lost Racer. Oh, rear his head and push it to one more. Oh, back wheels fly up there after the jump. Duck and roll slows down. Velociraptor nudges by. Couple of wheel lengths between the two. That's a stroke of luck for the Velociraptor. The duck and roll wheels went up on the ledge right there. Out of the hairpin. Could not control his outside momentum. Here comes the final race. The winner here is the winner of the day. Duck and roll. Starting behind here through the jump. Here comes the jump, and it looks pretty good. Duck and roll with some acceleration. Nudges off the side, and Veloci Racer, one of his best times of the day, did not slow down even for a second. And the duck and roll will uh, unfortunately lose out this one in the back two races. 2 1 on the score. And that's all Veloci Racer needs to put this one away. Of course, the Street Beast will win this one at. Over the alligator. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and this is the final race of round one here in the jump race. We'll call it the jump race as well, and features quite a big jump. Uh, fantasy and Volkswagen vehicles, obviously a different fantasy, pedal the metal and Audi, to uh, start things off. But uh, we had a struggle last time. The Porsche team could not seem to crest this jump very easily. Pedal the metal right there, turns around 180, and here comes the Audi down the inside line, and he'll cross ahead. And the Porsche team fell early, only in the quarterfinals. Only one car made it and proceeded to get out subsequently. Audi Avant and the Loco Motorin. Loco and Audi. As we round the first hairpin here, here comes the Audi on the far side there, losing some speed. Loco bounces into the lead by a length here, and the Audi spins around. And Loco's able to hold the lead through the jump. Both of them lost a little control. Audi finally turning around, but uh, well, they both found their uh, footing, we'll say. They're wheeling as they headed towards the hairpin. Loco motoring. Audi RS5. Similar models both times. Loco and Audi. Ooh, they both bounced down the first hill there. I'm wondering if the first hill is a little too steep for him. Audi, here comes the jump. Looks clean for a second. Loco goes off to the side, and I think this Audi's got it. And he just uh, took off after that jump, and uh, it was history, the race. He did grind the side there for a second, but I think the railing there on the side actually helped him out just a little bit. Kind of straightened his wheels out and pushed him on forward. Audi R8 Spider and the Carbonator. Carbonator featuring a <laughs> soda bottle, uh, half soda bottle model there uh, on the hood. And pretty interesting uh, look for sure. Almost misses the jump right there. Front wheels just pull himself onto it. So he'll finish the race, but he won't finish it first at all. That was, that was not really very fast for the Carbonator and... Uh, might need some more CO2 back there in the, the tank. Linster prototype in the Audi Sport Quattro. Linster in the Quattro. And then Linster loses the length there at the beginning, but fast up the hill. Starts to pull away here. Here comes the jump. The Quattro. It's not even on the screen. There he goes. And starting to speed up a little bit here. The Linster finds and lost control, but he's knocked the head like it's billiards. Take a look at that replay. It really was. Linster slows down here, goes backwards, but uh, just like the cue ball hitting off another billiard ball, that's how he was knocked across the line. Golf in the Viento. 
Volkswagen Golf. We've seen this car race quite a bit in uh, races and fun. It always performs a little bit better than you expect. Uh, Viento uh, ooh, taking the lead right here, but he's backwards. Here comes the Golf pushing around the outside on the inside line here. And he's going to grab the win. And again, speaking to that same point they made. Volkswagen Golf, actually a good comeback win, started behind and took advantage of the mistakes and did not let himself just push the competitor across the line. Rising Heat in the Audi. Rising Heat, Audi, neck and neck down the first straight. Who starts to break away through the turn? It will be the Audi. Rising Heat, ooh, slow, coming towards the jump and does not make the jump. The Audi will well, slowly but surely coast to the victory, and he didn't really need to speed it up anyway. Uh, that's going to be in tatters. Hits the front lip of the jump and falls to the rocks. Ooh, look at this replay. Not good. Almost uh, broke off the spoiler. It's going to be tough for the fantasy cars, but uh, both of them seem to have a decent amount of wins so far. Audi Spider and the HW Formula Solar. We got some solar power there. Solar and the Spider. And the Solar starts to break away early. Here comes a few lengths between them. And we get the jump, and it's smooth for both vehicles. The Audi Spider trying to catch up. He's fast down the line, but the uh, Solar is, well, quite a bit faster. And now we'll uh, clock another number for the Fantasy Cars. Fantasy with three, Volkswagen with five. Fantasy at the deficit right now. But things can change here in the next round, especially with the speed of the Solar. I might see him in the finals. Loco and the Spider. Well, this particular Loco put on quite a show in the first race, but again, struggles to stay steady through the lane. Bounces down the hill. Here comes the jump, the Spider, the Loco really moves the track when he hits ground. Tries to come back here on the outside line, but did not have the acceleration. I will say he did have the positioning though, which is something that's a little bit harder than you think for some of these vehicles down the final straight, but he just couldn't put on the gas there at the end. Linster and the Spider. Fantasy Car is only having two now left in their arsenal. Um, and the Linster, remember, he was uh, slow in the back sector, but it was pushed over the line. Here comes a Spider right around him. Took advantage of that bad jump. Same thing happened to Linster that happened in the first race. Hits the jump badly and uh, goes 180 and loses half speed. This time the Audi was like, I'm getting around this before the hairpin. And well, that was a clever idea at the least. Formula Solar on the out. Solar, the only hope left for the fantasy cars as he rolls down the hill. And he does take an early lead by a length. Here's the outside hairpin. Still manages to stay in front. And the jump looks good. Well, so does the rest of this race for the Solar. Able to stay straight down the line. Goes sideways for a second, but easily straightens out. And your Solar will be the... Uh, Last hope for this uh, team of fantasy cars. Have to see them compete in the semifinals, and I think he'll make it to the finals. Volkswagen Golf and the Audi. Now we're cutting down on the Volkswagen team. And it's even. Volkswagen Golf again. Never count him out until the end of the race. He's behind right now. Again, the jump looks good, but he skids for a second to the side. Skids again. The Audi is slow at the end. The Volkswagen Golf can't make it up, though. What a tough finish. See the replay. Tough on the Golf coming out and into the hairpin. The Audi actually slowed down quite a bit, but the Golf couldn't straighten out, and, uh, well, it, uh, it was a little pear-shaped for him at the end. Fantasy with one, Volkswagen three. Things may even up as we head into the final. Semifinals has to pass well for the uh, Fantasy cars, though. Spider and Solar. And the Solar again out to an early lead, looking fast. Down the line, few lengths between them. The jump, it's smooth for the Solar. Now he's around the hairpin. The Spider trying to catch up. They're both sideways. He nudges the Solar forward, and that's all that's going to happen. Spider was backwards and was in no position to put any maneuvers on. And only could uh, hope that the Solar did himself in, but uh, Solar just was able to find uh, some control there at the end. Spider and the Audi RS5. White Spider. Red Audi, neck and neck, here we go. Red Audi falling behind. You have the longer run towards the hairpin. Here comes the second hairpin in the Audi in the inside line, but loses that advantage. And the Spider will cross nicely. 
few lengths ahead. And you saw in the replay there, look at the Audi. He had a chance to really take it down the inside, but he just lost uh, speed there at the end and could not stay straight out of the turn. We head to the finals, and uh, as uh, per my prediction, well, the Solar is uh, here and ready to race. The first to win two. This particular Spider is a little bit more of a competitor compared to some of the other Audis we've seen. A little bit closer through the first sector. Here comes the Solar down the line backwards. Spider also spins around and well, all that speed loss for the Spider and he's not going to take this verse. Solar also had trouble through the hairpin but spun when he had so much speed and it still kind of propelled him forward to the hairpin. We change lanes. Solar. Head by a length. End of the turn. Head by many lengths. Going to come down to this jump. He jumps. It's good. Here comes the hairpin. He's down the back straight. Nice and fast. No problems there. And the Solar's going to pull this back for the Fantasy Cars, who did not do well in the first couple of rounds. And it's really the Solar who's carrying the team right here, and the uh, Volkswagens are pretty upset about the ending performance. A lot of consistency in that team, but they couldn't match up to the Solar. Everybody, I'm Brendan. That question will be less valid today as all these round tube teams have proved to be winners. Well, from round one. All American versus uh, Fantasy. Two groups of Fantasy actually uh, moved on to round two. This will be the first one. Grand Cross and the Ford GT to get things started. And the All American team did a number on their first team as well. So this should be a good one between these two. Right in the Ford GT taking a lead by a couple of lengths. Here comes the hairpin. Both cars pretty smooth out of it. The Grand Cross couldn't hold speed through the hairpin and will be taken down early here. I haven't seen these teams in a few couple of rounds but uh, they're back with a fury. Ford Mustang and the Exotic. Mustang Exotic. Exotic, ooh, stretching on a lead for a second there, but it starts to fall behind here by a length. Here comes the Mustang over the jump, cuts off the Exotic, sends him spinning backwards. And now he's rolling backwards, forwards. Uh, back wheels forwards here. And the Ford Mustang will take that race by a little bit, and we're even at one. Let's look at the Bubble Matic in the Pontiac. I remember the last time Bubble Matic actually did beat out one of the other cars and they said how tough that must be to say that you lost to a car called the Bubble Matic. Right now the Pontiac might fall to the same fate. Tough out of the jump, spinning all over the place and the Bubble Matic well, performing above expectations once again and he will take this one for the fantasy cars. Let's get the custom Ford Mustang and the Vulture Roadster. Now this one, a little bit more of a tough competitor, that Roadster. Especially quite a ominous name like Vulture Roadster. Oh, but he doesn't make the jump! Ooh, looks can be deceiving. And the Vulture Roadster, oh, he's going to fall quite short of uh, even making it to Sector 2. Roadster sits there, looks comfortable down there under the... Uh, Uprights holding up the jump, but uh, that's not really where you want to be. I like to be on the track here, like the Mustang. Dodge Charger and the Air Eruption. <laughs> a nice looking Charger, black and yellow. And looking pretty good to that inside hairpin. Starts to fall behind. Here comes the Air Eruption for the jump. It's clean for both of them. Blue Charger's got a chance here in the back straight, but the Air Eruption doesn't lose any speed coming down the final stretch. I make this look good to the hairpin. Look at how he took to the outside and stayed there. No zigzagging around when he hit that hairpin. Electrac and the Ford GT. Electrac GT. Here we go. Electrac taking it by a length up through the first hill. Here comes the GT slow through the hairpin and that doesn't look good for the back straight. Electrac not losing any speed. Does zigzag for a second but well, that was really no contest there at the end. And Electrac will pick up another one for the Fantasy Cars. There he comes, nice and slow down the end, but 
He was just tough to the first sector. That's what killed him. Corvette in the Moto Wing. Corvette, Moto Wing, neck and neck down the hill, up the hill they go, hairpin, Moto Wing falling behind. Here comes the Corvette to the jump, and he almost goes upside down. And the right two wheels touch way before the left, but somehow he evens it out and stretches down the inside line for the win. Moto Wing had a chance there, even knocked into the underside of the carriage. Uh, but somehow the Corvette used that momentum to his favor. Chevrolet Impala Electro Silhouette. Electro, Chevrolet, the Impala, mm, taking it by a length here through Sector 1, here comes the jump, ooh, an Electro, ooh, T-Bones, the Chevrolet, Chevrolet has no speed, but he continues to be nudged forward by the Electro, who can't catch up, and the Chevrolet spent uh, half a Sector 2 sideways, and still manages to take the win, uh, good uh, defensive driving by the Impala. Well, that leaves five All-American and three Fantasy. Bubble Matic in there, and certainly a fan favorite for just its underdog nature. Impala Eruption. Just saw this Impala pull out quite the uh, unexpected win. Uh, but now he's going up against the Eruption, who really does not have any time for mistakes like that. He does turn backwards, but still smooth through that hairpin. Impala tries to catch up, but there's no funny business going on here. Eruption's one of your fastest vehicles out here uh, well, throughout the tournament, I'd say. And if you don't have the speed, you uh, needn't bother putting on any tricks. Bubblematic in the Ford GT. Will the Bubblematic push to the semifinals? Obviously, uh, honestly, I'm curious. GT looking like he doesn't want to let that happen. Bubblematic keeping speed with the GT through the jump. Tough jump for the Bubblematic. I think it's going to be bad. Nose dived a little bit there out of the jump. And he's not going to take the win. GT is uh, he was quite smooth. Did land a little bit leftward. But uh, again, through that hairpin quite smooth and stayed off the wall towards the end. And we'll take that. Electrac and the Ford Mustang. Last fantasy car here. Two of them have made it to the semifinals with the fantasies. Dominate the semifinals if the Electrac wins here, and that will be the case. Looking pretty good. Here comes the Mustang trying to get inside line around the hairpin, speeding up here towards the outside, but he can't catch up with the Electrac. He was ahead again. That sector one speed is very important, especially down that back hill. Corvette, custom Ford Mustang. Now we're tripping down the All American team. Here comes the Corvette. Ooh, out there by a couple lengths. Custom Mustang falling behind. Ooh, a little bit of a nose dive, but straight in the Corvette's all over the place. Now he's facing backwards, but still manages to stay ahead. And that's going to be good for the Corvette, and maybe we'll have a chance of making it through the semis. Let's take a look at it. Fantasy 2, All American 2. Ford GT in the Electrac. Electrac. And we just saw him race a couple races ago. Did a good number on the All-American team. Ford GT not looking so happy about that. Up by a couple legs through the jump. Holds the lead there. Zigzags around. Cuts off the Electrac inside line for both of them. And they will both speed to the end. With the Ford GT. And he was just a little bit smarter out there on the course. Electrac might have a chance if he pushed to the outside. Or an eruption, but uh, he just didn't make any moves that way. I'm not sure why he didn't go for it. Maybe he didn't get the draft he needed. Eruption again, taking a lead by Sector 2. And he's backwards now, and the Corvette can't catch up. I don't know where all the momentum went for the Corvette, but it all died. Eruption even gave him space to come through. But uh, looks like the Corvette hit something there coming out of the hairpin, and well, it all died. Finals. We're looking at uh, first to win two races. We got an eruption. We got a Ford GT. The fastest, I'd say, from each group. Ford GT even beating out the eruption down the first sector, but that's going to change through the hairpin. Eruption by a nose, but the Ford GT through sector one is faster. Eruption's going to have some catching up to do. New for him, and he spins out. And the GT. A large margin. He's going to roll right on through. 
They change lanes. Will the GT sweep this one and put the All-Americans in the finals? Will the air eruption come back for a final stand? Here comes the jump, and it's good for the air eruption. Fast through the hairpin, but he can't catch up, and it's the gap just largens. And the Ford GT will end it for the fantasy cars. There is another group of fantasy again coming well, in the next video, but uh, this group will go home eh, a little disappointed. Again, the Ford GT, quite a run there at the end. Characteristic that encourages staying in the middle of the lane as much as possible. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan. I'm the Street Beasts, and the other fantasy group from round one will compete for the final spot in the finals. All-American, uh, first of all, Duck and Rowan Formula will get started here, but All-American is the team to beat. And forever which team here will make it to the finals. Right now looking good for the fantasy cars who are way out in front of the duck and roll. As the formula races to the end. I don't know what's going on with the duck and roll, but a little bit more ducking and not enough rolling out there in the first race. Well, maybe look at a replay gets a look into it. Well, we do see the duck and roll take that inner line and the hairpin and that's gonna indicate a lack of speed. Maybe he had trouble staying straight through the lanes. Well, rising Heat and Turtle Shell. Well, that's going to be tough for the Street Beasts on the start. Turtle Shell trying to pull things back here and even it out if he can. Starts to slow down. Here we go. Fast through the end of this first sector. And the Rising Heat bounces and ends up behind. Turtle Shell is actually backwards here. But, ooh, twists just across. That twist at the end. Unnecessary, but uh, still good enough for the win. Let's get Turtle Shell and the El Viento. Turtle Shell, Viento, racing down the hill, neck and neck as they go. What does the inside line look up like for the Turtle Shell? Mm, not so great. The Viento has speed down the hill. And both of them stay straight through the jump. Here comes the Turtle Shell on the inside line, but the Viento cuts right there, and there's no space. Turtle Shell will lose out by a few lengths. Mm, it's a shame. Not this Turtle Shell would have. Ended with a similar fate as the first one, but I had trouble staying out in front down the end of Sector 1. Carbonator and the Croc Rod. And here they go. And the Croc Rod pulling out in front here by quite a bit. Carbonator left behind through that first hairpin. It's going to be trouble. And that soda-looking vehicle now bouncing around like a pinball through the hairpin. And he may not even finish the course. Another one for the Street Beasts. Truly a unique view, but uh, not one that's going to pull a lot of speed out there on the course. Tough to see a car not even finish. Duck and Roll and the Linster Prototype. This duck and roll, uh, if you remember past performance, was a little bit better than the first one we saw. Linster Prototype started out in the lead, but duck and roll pulls things back through the end of that hill into the hairpin. Here comes the jump, and the Linster's out of it. Duck and roll can cruise here. He did take a little nose dive, but he's backwards and finishing, and the Linster uh, perches up on top of the rocks, almost in the pool. And, well, he's far from the end of the course. Oh, look at that tough nose dive, man. Hit the front carriage of the car. Almost above the hood. And that'll be the end for the Linster. Pedal to metal and the Velociraptor. Well, the Velociraptor has been one of the faster vehicles for sure. We've seen from the Street Beast. And we see that lead start to take over for the Velociraptor here. Pedal to metal needs to... Wow, the flip right there out of the jump. He was upside down. Pedal to metal. Well, he's not going to finish the race, but uh, at least give credit for riding himself through that. That was a full 360 degree flip through the jump. Maybe get a replay on that. Look at the flip. Actually hits right on the top of the nose and finishes the flip all the way through. After that, he's so dizzy, he doesn't even know what direction he's going. Here's the I believe in the loco motor in. Well, somehow, he was able to keep himself righted and not end up wheels up. The Believe in the Locomotor. Locomotor and slowing down here. Oh, and the I believe. I don't believe that he's going to finish this race. The Locomotor and actually had speed there coming out of the jump, but the I believe it didn't even matter 
fell right to the water. Actually knocked right off and fell backwards into the crocodile water. Actually the first time we've seen a car actually hit water here in uh, this tournament. Locomotor and again in the duck and roll. Comes the duck and roll. Mm, fast. Through the hairpin, stretching out the lead right here. Look at this, Locomotor has got nothing. Oh, he comes fast through the jump, but the duck and roll still has a lot of room. Oh, duck and roll goes sideways. Locomotor and T-bones him, but oh, the Locomotor and actually was able to catch up at the end. I couldn't even believe that. The duck and roll just died there, just a couple inches from the track. Look at the turn here. Duck and roll coming down. Now starts to turn back. Tries to face front again. T-boned. Duck and roll still has the lead, but right at the end, it looks like he hit the brakes. I couldn't even believe what I saw. That leaves two locomotorins going into the next round, along with the street beasts. We we'll also have four, one of them being a duck and roll, and the Vien too. A little out there for the next round. Obviously, fan favorite. Well, Duck and Roll holds that title right now. Viento very fast, though. It's going to be tough for the Duck and Roll to make up this ground. Here he goes, coming down the back straight on the inside, but not enough time. And the Viento put on the gas there in the last couple lengths and held through. Duck and Roll had acceleration. It was pulling up right alongside, uh, but it ended within a length. Velociraptor locomotive. This will be a good race. Local motor and usually quite slow coming out of the hairpin, but the speed picks up once the jump happens. A nice low jump bounces through acceleration move, but he can't keep straight. Velociraptor is going to hold that easy win. Local motor and actually coming backwards here. Looks like a train pulling up to the station as he crosses the finish line. That's going to be the end. Going out for a cruise here today. Another locomotor and the Croc Rod. Toss up for this one. Both of those cars very speedy on the track. Croc Rod, very aerodynamic. That's going to be helpful along through the jump here. Here's the jump for the Croc Rod. Very smooth locomotor and fast out of the jump. Starts to close that ground here at the end. Croc Rod, can he not hold through? They might give it to him. It looks like the locomotor and has it. But maybe the second replay will hold true with some answers. Crocrod has the lead by quite a bit. Locomotor and terribly fast out of the hairpin. But they're going to give it to the Crocrod by, I'd say, about a half a millimeter. Turtle Shell and the Formula Solar. And that's got to be one of the closest races I've ever seen here at Races and Fun. And the comeback, the speed, the Locomotor is able to grab through the second sector is, is really... Unbelievable. Turtle Shell actually behind here pushes the solar. And he can't get around. He had an open lane, but uh, decided to neglect its presence. Solar was doing awful. He was sideways for half the hairpin. Turtle Shell had all the space and time even, but just decided to stay there. Probably because he was backwards, had trouble controlling himself. Two Street Beasts, two Fantasy Cars. Unfortunately, Duck and Rolls are not involved in the semifinals, but... The Velociraptor and the Solar will go at it, and fans are rooting for the Street Beats. They want to see the Ducks race again in the finals. The Velociraptor falling behind here. Solar, definitely one of the fastest cars out there, except now well, with the exception of last time. Toler goes sideways, and the Velociraptor capitalizes. Two mistakes for the Solar, who has the speed but did not have the agility right there. Sideways, lost all the speed. Velociraptor, well, he just shoved right by. Crack right on the Viento. Can the Street Beast put it away right here? Croc Rod wins? Well, it's definitely going to be a Street Beast win. Viento, a tough competitor to go up against here, especially down that first sector. is fast through the jump. Here comes the hairpin. Croc Rod on the inside line, but the Viento cuts him off. Had the speed, but uh, not the placement. And just pushes him on ahead. Look at the Viento here. Smart racing right here. Goes outside, but then dodges back in, seeing that the Croc Rod has the space. And that's going to put them both into the finals. Viento going up against the Velociraptor. Velociraptor, sorry. Well, either name would be good in my opinion. Velociraptor. Viento. Here we go. Velociraptor taking a lead down through Sector 1 into Sector 2. Is T-boned by the Viento. Viento tries to get to the outside line but doesn't have enough speed to make it worthwhile. 
man, what a finish. Velociraptor caught up there in the hairpin, slows down, but the Viendo pushes them along. Zigzags at the right moment, but he can't put the race away. Viento, here's the second race, has to win this to keep it going, but the Velociraptor is bringing it right now, fast through the turn, no mistakes out of the hairpin, and that will be a win for the Street Beasts, who sweep the finals here, and by one car, will take it right to the finals. All-American, well, they might be a little nervous after seeing the incredible racing of this particular team. With the performance of these two teams over the last couple rounds, that can be quite hard in this case. Hey everybody, I'm Brendan, and the finals of the jump race are here. All-American and the Street Beasts are the two teams to make it through. Ford and Duck and Roll will kick things off. And we have two evenly matched teams in some respect, but uh, definitely two different racing strategies. Duck and Roll here behind by a few lengths, but fast out of the jump. Ford is backwards, and the Duck and Roll dives inside, but he can't keep pace. Somehow the Ford accelerated in the last couple lengths. Or something with the Duck and Roll on the wheels. Just uh, died out there. A lot of unexpected occurrences already. I believe in the Corvette, and I believe that the Street Beasts are now down a point and quite confused about how that last race turned out. I believe bounces out of the jump and turns on the outside of that hairpin, and the Corvette slow at the end, but still fast enough to win. Street Beasts now down two. Unless someone might want to check in on the duck and roll and see maybe uh, what happened there. Custom Ford Mustang GT in the turtle shell. Turtle shell on the far side. GT on the near side. Here comes the Mustang around the curve and slow down the hill. Here comes the turtle shell through the jump. Nice and straight. He's got a lot of speed coming out of that jump. And down the backstretch he goes. Picks up the first point for the Street Beasts. They're not going to go down that easily here in the finals. A lot of swerving there on the Mustang as well, down the back straight. Croc Rod and the Dodge Charger. Croc Rod also an unsung hero of the Street Beasts. What a fast vehicle. You see him make time up the hill there. Dodge Charger falling behind. Here's the jump. Oh, the Croc Rod hits off the nose of the lip. And he's going to be upside down and backwards and, well, without speed at this point. Stops a few lengths, a few uh, track lengths short of that finish line. And things looked really good, but uh, all fell apart. Took a nosedive right at the front of that jump, and uh, just a lot of uh, vibration through the track. It was flipped around. Already a couple unfortunate occurrences for the Street Beasts. Pontiac GTO and the Duck and Roll. Let's see if the, this particular Duck and Roll has been... will be ready to take things back. It's even. Here we go down the Pontiac falling behind a good jump for the duck and roll but he swerves around he's backwards now Pontiac on the near side here trying to catch up Ooh, they both slow down but the duck and roll manages to stay straight and across tough turn for him and I thought the Pontiac might have had a chance to come down and take it on the near side mm, but uh, couldn't build up the speed turtle shell and the Ford GT turtle shell up the hill, a little bit slow. Here comes the jump, not looking good for the turtle shell. Ooh, fast through the jump, though. We'll give him that. He's starting to gain on the GT, but the GT breaks away. And that'll be another one for the All-American team. Beautiful day for racing. Low wind speeds, which is good for that airtime jump, which is kind of tough when uh, you have a crosswind. Chevrolet and the Velociraptor. But we got none of that today. We're at the circuit. Last race. Here he comes down the hill, and that's where all the speed usually comes for this car. We've seen that in other rounds, and he's got it down the hairpin. Almost came out faster than ever down that hairpin. Duck and roll on the Ford GT. I will say, performance-wise, this duck and roll has not been the top of the charts. The other two have uh, overshadowed 
pretty well. But right now, things are looking very good for this duck and roll. And I think all he's got to do is finish the race at this point. As the All-American team <laughs> comes to a dead stop in the water. But the duck and roll, he doesn't even finish the race. I don't even know what to say at that point. Wheels up there on the All-American team with the Charger. But, I mean, what happened here at the end? Open track. No cars to worry about. Quite a good amount of speed coming out of the hairpin, but dies right here. <laughs> Almost like there's sandpaper on the ground. I think they will give him the win on Ford Progress, but uh, Street Beast 4, All-American 4. Definitely not looking good for one of the coming races. Last we'll racer in the Corvette. I will say, that's not how they want to finish with that duck and roll. Last racer, round the hairpin here, staying out in front, and he's going to take that one pretty easily as well. All Americans just lost sight of uh, the lead right after the first hairpin. Ford GT in the turtle shell. And this is definitely one of the fastest cars on the All American side, and already showing that a length or two ahead through the first hairpin here starts to take off here comes the jump looking good and smooth not even twisting around outside of the hairpin and a little swerve and he's gonna get it done and uh, well I think you'll see him in the finals for sure we're even at one here in round two as we roll towards the semifinal and Street Beast with another duck and roll Ford Mustang Coupe, who had quite the comeback there in the first race. Best of the duck and roll, whose uh, middle name is Comeback. And now looking to do it once again. Behind here through the jump, duck and roll takes a little bit of nosedive, swerves all around. Ford Mustang with the T-bone on the duck and roll, but that's where all the speed is transferred to. And well, he'll duck and roll across the finish line. And the Mustang... Unfortunately, made the wrong move. He needed to dive outside there at first and then cut back in. And he just stayed away right into the duck and roll. Charger and a duck and roll. Here he comes. Duck and roll. Slow through the hill. And here's the jump. Charger way out in front here. And the duck and roll has some speed coming out of the jump. Here comes the back straight. But no, he swerves for a second. And the... It's not going to be enough time, and again, dies there right on the last track link. And I don't even know how. He looks quite fast, even coming through the hairpin. But, uh, I don't know, something's, something's going wrong there towards the end. Maybe those wheels need to be greased up a little bit more. All-American with two, Street Beast with two. Really a perfect finals, if you look at it like that. Charger and Velocirace. One of these cars will go to the finals of this uh, final event. And here comes the Velocity Racer, looking good for him right now. Oh, the Charger with a, a 360 axle. But that's not going to do him no good. He'll cross backwards and pretty shaken up, but at least he uh, looked pretty epic there for a second. Actually hit the nose of the car on the ground and then took the flip. That's got to be hard on the body of the car. I might want to get that checked out, but... Well, that's tough. It's a tough way to finish. Duck and roll in the Ford GT. Ford GT has to win here to make the finals a interesting battle between these two teams. Otherwise, the Street Beast will maintain that. Ooh, Ford GT. Back wheels up almost 90 degrees in the air, but he finally cuts around there past the hairpin. And the duck and roll speed is halved. Let me take a look at that replay here. Uh, here. 4GT manages to get in front around the hairpin. Duck and Roll still has a chance, but uh, he gets shoved over out of the uh, hairpin. That was good defensive driving. And 4GT again breaks away. He likes to break away before that final straight. So he can really put it away and cruise easily down the back stretch. The last racer in the 4GT. This is the finals. And these are our top two racers from the top two teams here at the Jump Race Tournament. And the 4 GT over the jump and back wheels up again. Velocirator trying to nudge around here. He goes to the outside but can't steady himself. And the 4, uh, 4 GT will take the first one. We saw the battle between the two. They were close there. But uh, one car is going to trip up at some point. Let's change lanes. 
Here we go. Velocitracer on the inside line this time. Ford GT looking towards the outside. Few lengths behind. Here comes the jump. Ooh, smooth for both cars. But the Ford GT spins around. Now he's backwards. And Velocitracer, he breaks away this time. And we're even at one. Pretty much a uh, mirror image of last race, except uh, different results. The last race for Ford GT. This is for it all. Will the All-American team or Velocir uh, Street Beast come out victorious here? Velocir Racer speeds up through the jump and nudges off the side. He's behind, takes the inside line. It's close. And I think the Ford GT let up just a little bit too early. Saw the nudge there off the, uh, the narrowing of the course. And it is the Velocir Racer by uh, about a wheel length to take it here. And that will do it for the Jump Race Tournament. I hope you guys enjoyed. Congratulations to the Street Beasts and the Velocir Racer. And we will see you next time on Races and Fun.